Hello, my name is Josie, and today I will be walking you step by step how to crochet a baby bear hat. This hat is for size 0 to 3 months, and it is a very beginner friendly project, and I will just take you through start to finish. So, first of all, let's talk about what materials you need for this project. I have used a very thick, bulky yarn. This is Bernay Baby Blanket. It comes with lots of fun colors. You need a size 10 crochet hook, scissors, a tapestry needle. Make sure your tapestry needle has an eye that's big enough for your yarn to go through, and just one stitch marker. Make sure it's the kind of stitch marker that you can unclip and put onto a new stitch after removing it from the stitch it was on. Okay, y'all, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do to begin our project is cast on. I will be using what I call the fishing method, and this is just my personal version of the magic ring or the magic loop. I just try to simplify it a little bit, make it easier for beginners. So if this is your first project or you don't know how to do a magic ring, you can watch my video, which I'll try to link here, um, about some crochet basics, how to cast on, different um, stitches, how to chain, terminology, things like that. Okay, so there we go. I've cast on. You can see I have my magic ring right here and I have a loop on my crochet hook. Here's my tail, it has the end of my yarn, and my working yarn. Okay, y'all, let's do round one. So for round one, we are just going to work eight single crochets into our magic ring. So this is the ring that we're working inside of. I'm going to insert my hook into the ring up a loop so that you can see I have two loops on my hook now. Grab my yarn, which is called yarning over, and pull through both loops. So that's one single crochet. So again, I'm going into the ring, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops, two, again, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops, that's four, so I've got half my stitches, insert, pull up a loop, over, pull through both loops, okay, I just need two more, pull through both loops, one more, yarn over, pull through both loops, oops, there we go. Now you guys pause the video and take your time if you need to. Now that I have done my eight single crochets, I need to tighten this up because this is actually the crown of the head on the hat. Let me show you. On this finished hat, we just made this part right here. So you can see obviously there's not a giant hole on the top of the hat, so we need to cinch this up to make it tight. So what we're gonna do is just hold your work in your right hand or your left hand if you're doing it left-handed. And I'm gonna pull on this tail. Now be very careful when you do this. Don't pull too tightly too quickly or you might break your yarn. So I'm just gonna pull a little bit and check. Okay, that definitely helped, but I still have a little bit of a hole right there. So I'm gonna pull on it again. And I'm pulling on the tail, not the working yarn. Pull, pull, pull. You could see it kind of tightening up right there. Yeah, that looks good. So I don't have a hole anymore. So my stitches are still going around the ring, but I can't see the ring anymore. So that's perfect. And I'm just going to 
for my own sanity, count my stitches and make sure that I have eight stitches, not including the one that's on my hook. So I'm gonna count, I have one, you can kind of stick your finger into each stitch to feel where they are. So there's one, two, three, four, five, Ooh, I know it's there. Six, seven, and the eighth one might be kind of hard to see because it was the very first one, but it's there. <laughs> eight. So I've got my peace of mind <laughs> with my eight stitches. It looks like when I was counting my stitches, my hole opened up a little bit again. So I'm gonna cinch it closed again. Right, that's round one. Okay, round two. So now I am going to do two single crochets in the next stitch, which again, like I just counted, um, this is actually my first stitch that I made into the magic ring. So into this stitch right here that my finger is coming through right there, I'm going to insert my hook. I'm gonna pull yarn, pull up a loop through that stitch, yarn over, and pull through both stitches. And you can see I kind of, I, I'm touching my finger and my thumb through that stitch so that I know where it's at. So I just made one single crochet into this stitch. I'm gonna do one more in the same stitch. So again, I'm pulling up a loop. I'm still touching my fingers right here. Yarn over pull through both loops. Get myself some more yarn. Oops. All right, so I just made two single crochets right here and right here into this stitch. Now I'm gonna grab my stitch marker, open it up. Again, make sure you use this kind of stitch marker where it's either like a clasp, like on a necklace, or like a safety pin. And I'm going to put my stitch marker on the first stitch that I just made, the first of the two. So not the one that's on my hook, that one doesn't count. Not the next one next to the hook, but this one. This is the first of those two that I just made. So I'm putting my stitch marker on that and fastening it so that I know where I started round two. Okay, so now that we've done those two single crochets in the first stitch and I placed my stitch marker on the first of those two stitches, now I'm going to continue round two. And I'm going to do two single crochets in each stitch in this round. So there's, there were eight when we started. I just did my two single crochets in the first one, so there should be seven more. So same thing as before. I pulled up a loop, pull through both loops, same stitch, pull up a loop again, pull through both loops. Okay, so I just did two in that one, so I'm moving to the next stitch. And I really do recommend using your fingers and like finding where that stitch is, especially when you're using a big bulky yarn like this. You can get away with that. So I'm doing the exact same thing. Two single crochets in each stitch in this round. Okay, I did two in that one, finding my next stitch right here, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops, same stitch, my second one, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through both loops. Did two in that one, so next, two single crochets in this one, stitch, two 
simple crochets. Okay, looks like I can see where my stitch marker is, so it looks like I have one, two more stitches before the stitch marker. And remember, I'm doing two single crochets in each of those two stitches. So that's one, two, and then last one right here. One, two. And again, I'll keep saying it through this video. Pause when you need to. Take your time. Understand what you're doing as much as you can. All right, so that was round two, but I know I'm done with the round for a few reasons. The first and foremost being that I see the next stitch if I was to keep going, my stitch marker is on this stitch. So I know that's where I started the round. So that tells me to stop. And then also if I go back and count my stitches, I now have 16 stitches. So I just doubled my number of stitches. Okay, you guys, we are on round three. So for this round, we're gonna start off doing one single crochet into my marked stitch. And by marked stitch, I mean literally just this next stitch that has my stitch marker on it. So I'm gonna do one single crochet in there. So I'm inserting my hook into the stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. And since I just did my one stitch and the marked stitch, I'm going to remove my stitch marker and I'm going to place it now on the stitch that I just made. So that's not the one that's currently on the hook. That one never counts. It's the stitch, it's the stitch right next to the hook. That's the stitch I just made. Okay, so now I know where I'm starting round three. So I just did one single crochet in here, and the next stitch I'm going to do two single crochets. So insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops, and again, same stitch. So that one has two single crochets in it. Next one, I'm doing just one single crochet. So in this round, basically we're doing every other stitch has two single crochets in it. So I did one, two, this one only needs one. Next stitch, I'm gonna put two in there. One, two, getting more yarn. did two in this one, so I'm going to do one in the next one. Next stitch, two. Next stitch, just one. So it's just a repeating pattern. Next stitch, putting two single crochets. One, two, Next stitch, just one. Next stitch, two. I need to unravel some more yarn. Going too fast for my <laughs> yarn ball. Okay, so let's see, what did I just do? I just did two in here. So then one, two in this one, one in this one, two in this one, one in this one. in this one. So you should end, since we have an even number of stitches, and we're going one, two, one, two, one, two, you should end putting two stitches in the stitch before your stitch marker. And 
that is round three. Take a pause if you need to, catch up, take your time. Okay, we are now on round four. Round four. So for this round, we're gonna start off putting two single crochets into the marked stitch. So this stitch right here, do two single crochets in there. There's one. There's two. And after I've done my two in the marked stitch, I'm going to move my stitch marker. And since I just made two stitches in there, I'm going to be very careful to make sure I place my marker on the first of those two stitches. So remember again, this one never counts, the one on the hook never counts. So this was the second one I just made, and this was the first one I just made. So that's where my round started. Securing my stitch marker, maybe. There we go. Okay, so I did two in that one. Now in the next 11 stitches, I am going to only do a single crochet. So I started the round with doing two, in the first stitch, but the next 11 stitches, which will be about halfway across, I'm only doing one single crochet. You guys can see I literally like poke my finger through there to know where I'm going. <laughs> I think this is 10. I'll need to go count to make sure. 11. Let's see. So here's my first stitch. It's marked. Second one and then 11 from there. 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, so that was eleven. Now, after you've done this, uh, the eleven single crochets, and the next stitch, so the twelfth stitch, we're going to do two single crochets. Another one in the same stitch, two, and then just finish out your round all the way to the stitch before the stitch marker with single crochets. So just one in each stitch. Okay, so I just finished round four in the stitch right before my marked stitch. So I should now have 26 total stitches all the way around the edge here. And pause, take your time if you need to, take a break, do what you need to do. But that is the end of round four. Okay, we are now on round five. 
So from here on out, finishing the hat is pretty easy. So all we're gonna do in round five is one single crochet in every stitch. So starting with my marked stitch right here, I'm doing one single crochet and I'm gonna take a moment to move my stitch marker up to the stitch I just created. Again, that's just telling us where we start and finish our rounds. And then I'm just going to do one stitch, one single crochet in every stitch across this round, ending in the stitch right before my marked stitch. So let's go. Okay, you guys, I just finished my round five. I did one single crochet in every stitch all the way across the perimeter. And I ended in the stitch right before my marked stitch. So that is round five. Okay, I have some very good news for you. The next four rounds, so rounds six through nine, the next four rounds, are just the same as round five that we just did. So very simple, you're just doing one single crochet in each of the 26 stitches around the perimeter of the hat. So that's just going to give us some length to the hat. Because you've created the crown, as you can see. So now we're doing basically this part of the hat right here. So next four rounds, six through nine, very easy. Just one single crochet each stitch. So let's do it. Okay, you guys, we are on the final round now. So I just finished five total rounds, rounds five through nine, of one single crochet in each stitch around. So now I'm on round 10, which is our final round. So for this round, what we're gonna do is in each stitch across, starting with our marked stitch right here, we are going to single crochet into the back loop only. So look at your stitch. See, I stuck my finger in there again. That always helps me. <laughs> and you can see that each stitch has these two loops on it. We are going to, instead of inserting down here and going under both of those legs of the stitch. Sorry, you can't see them. There they are. Instead of going right there, that's what we have been doing, we're going to go through only the back loop. So I'm going into the back loop, pulling up a loop, and pulling through both of those. And as usual, I'm moving my stitch marker to the stitch that I just made. Oops, let me get it on there good, okay. There we go. Oops. I'm having trouble with the stitch markers today. Okay. So all of the stitches across, we're going one single crochet into back loop only. Okay, I just finished round 10, our final round, so I just did my one single crochet and back loop only all the way across the rim of the hat. And now, just to finish the hat, we are going to slip stitch into the back loop only of the marked stitch. Actually, you know what, no, we're going to <laughs> slip stitch into the full stitch. I think that'll look better. So we're into this marked stitch right here. I'm going 
into the whole stitch, okay? Pulling up a loop, but instead of yarning over like we do for a single crochet, that loop I just pulled up, I am just pulling that loop through the other loop. That's a slip stitch. Okay, so I just slip stitched and then I'm going to chain one, two, and leave my hook right there, lay it down. And I'm gonna cut myself um, a smaller tail. Let's do about four or five inches. Cut it, and then with the loop still on your hook, you're going to pull that through. And then carefully to kind of cinch that, the two chains you just did against the hat. So you just have a little tail right there. And you can go ahead and remove your stitch marker. And you just made a little hat. Look at that. Now, I would like to note that I personally, like this is great, this is fine. I like to turn it inside out and then make this the right side actually because I like the look of the little rim that we just made right here going through the back loop only. You can almost see, like you see your straight edge here and then you can also see a straight edge going across right here. That's the loop that we didn't go through when we went through back loop only and I just like Personally, I like how it creates that little, um, the brim of the hat effect right there. So yeah, that's our hat. We will do the ears next. Okay, y'all, so we have made our hat, and the next step is to make our little bear ears. So we're gonna make two ears. So the first thing you're gonna do is just go ahead and cast on using whatever method you prefer and then once you have cast on you're going to chain three so I'm chaining one two three chain three and then we're going to single crochet into the second hook or second stitch from the hook so this one does not count remember so this is the first stitch from the hook second stitch from the hook right here so I'm going to do two single crochets into that chain so there's one and two two single crochets and then I'm going to do two single crochets in the last stitch. So we skipped one here, did two in here, and there's one more stitch on that chain. I'm going to do two single crochets into that stitch as well. So there's one, two, okay. So I just did the first row. Now I have four total stitches. One, two, three, four. And so before I start row two, I'm just going to turn my work. So I'm turning it around. So we ended right here and I'm literally just flipping it over. Okay, so row two for your bare ears. Last row, it's just two rows for each ear. We are first going to chain one, chain one, and then we are going to do two single crochets in that same stitch that we just did the chain in. So you can see that chain, this is the chain right here, is coming out of this stitch. We're gonna do two single crochets into that same stitch. So I'm going to do one, two single crochets into that same stitch and then after that I am doing two single crochets in each of the three remaining stitches so see I have one two three more stitches I'm going to do two single crochets in each of those three 
So I'm going one, two, and then again, one, two, and one more time, last stitch. One, two, okay, and that's it. Now, we're to just finish the ear, to fasten off, we're going to chain two, just like we finished the hat, chain two, and then you're going to cut your yarn and pull that through and then just cinch it closed right there. And when you do this part, make sure you leave a pretty good little tail. It's not gonna be super long, but um, make sure you have a little bit of length for the next step. Okay, so now that we have our little ear here, you'll see that it looks a little weird. It's kind of like floppy right now. It doesn't have a lot of structure. But if you look at the ears on my finished hat, these seem like they're more sturdy and you can see they're like kind of curved and concave like, like a bear ear, right? So how do we turn this into this? Glad you asked. <laughs> so using the tail that you just cut, you're gonna stick the end of that yarn into your tapestry needle. And you're just going to sew, weaving in and out, like front to back along the straight edge of your barrier. See how you have an edge that curves and then an edge that's more straight. So along the more straight edge, you're just going to weave with your tapestry needle in and out along that edge. So I just went front to back and then I'm coming back to front. This does not need to be precise. You just need to go right along that edge in between your crochet stitches. And you can kind of already see as I go, it's starting to already pull the ear together and give it some more shape. And I haven't even really tried to do it yet. So once you've gone across that bottom, you can see it's already, it's already doing it. Um, you're going to cinch it, so by that I just mean the same strand that you were just weaving in and out the bottom. I'm just going to pull on that a little bit, and it's going to give your little bare ear that nice curved and concave look to it. And then to make sure that it holds that shape, I like to then go back across. So I just move down this way, and I'm going to go back up that way just to make sure everything is held in place nicely. Okay, so there we go. One ear is done. So now you're going to make a second ear doing the exact same thing. So you can go back and watch this section of the video again, telling you how to make a little bear ear. I'll see you back when you finish your second one. Okay, let's finish this project out. So, now we have made our hat and we have made two little bear ears. All that's left is to attach our ears onto the hat and weave in all of our ends. So, I am just taking my little ears. This is not an exact science. I'm just putting them on my hat <laughs> and seeing where they look best. So you can put them up a little bit further if you want them to be up on the top of the head. You can put them down towards the side. I like to go somewhere right in the middle. So I'm going to aim for them being right about there. And if you want to, you can use a stitch marker to mark where you're going to put the ears. I just kind of freehand it at this point because I've made a few of these hats. But if you're more comfortable marking the spots where you're going to put your ears, by all means, please go ahead and do that. Okay, so for attaching the ears, we're sewing the ears onto the hat. 
Now the main things that you want to keep in mind during this part is you're sewing along the bottom edge of the ear, so not the rounded part because you want that part of the ear to stick up off the hat. So sewing along the bottom edge of the ear and make sure that when you start sewing on, let me show you an example, you are catching stitches on the hat. So see that's like on the hat and then coming up and catching stitches in the ear. Oh, see I actually did not catch it, I just went in between the hat and the ear there so make sure I get it here. So I need to get into a stitch on the actual ear. Pull it tight, not too tight. So you can see that's very loosely attached now. I went through a stitch on the hat and a stitch on the ear. And again, it's not exact. The bulky yarn hides your stitches very well. So don't stress out too much about this part. Okay. That's really all there is to it though. Just making sure that you're catching stitches on the hat and on your little ear. And I would go, so I started on this part of the ear and kind of went across to here. I would go, also go back across just to make sure that ear is really secured on there and isn't going to get easily ripped off. So stitch, when you're stitching on your ear, stitch across the bottom and onto the hat this way and then go back this way. Okay. So I'm just going to go back across real quick and make sure you get the corners of the ear on there too. So I'm going to see how it's like sticking off a little bit right here. I want to get that and put it more flush against the hat. See how that kind of closed a little space right there. And then I'm going to go back across the bottom the way from whence I came. Okay, so that is one ear. But that is how you sew on the ear. So I'm going to go ahead and sew on my other ear and I'll see you guys then. Okay, you guys, we have almost completed our baby bear hat. So now that your ears are on, we are just going to weave in our ends. So if you have any ends still sticking out of your hat, go ahead and you can use your tapestry needle or with the super chunky yarn, you can really just use your fingers um, to just push that end into the middle of your hat, the inside part, and just pull it through so that you don't have any tails sticking out anymore. And then you can turn your hat inside out. And we are going to weave these ends using our tapestry needle just to make sure that our hats don't come apart easily. So you can just weave in and out of some stitches. Make sure you stay on the inside of the hat so don't actually go through to the other side, but staying on this plane. We're going to go into some stitches. So see I've gone through like half of a stitch there. Just pick up some random stitches and pull through and then I like to as I do this kind of pull on your project a little bit so that you make sure you're not accidentally adding any extra tension and then go back the same way you really just need to do it that like twice like go through and then come back and then take your needle off to the next tail. So we'll trim all these at the very end. 
go ahead and move to the next tail and just do this for all of the tails that you see sticking out in crazy places. Just weaving into stitches on the wrong side, which means the side that's not going to show on the final product. That's over on the inside of the hat. It's called the wrong side. And we're just hiding our yarn ends so that they're not sticking out in crazy places and so that our project that we worked so hard on is not going to fall apart. So keep doing this for all of your ends. Okay, so one note while you're weaving in your ends, this one that's at the very bottom here where we um, finished crocheting the actual hat when you did your chain two and you pulled it and cinched it closed. This one I want you to be more careful with and you're doing the same thing. It's just I want you to make sure that you, remember this is inside out, um, bring that yarn tail up into the hat instead of just going along the brim here. So go ahead and make sure you're actually bringing that yarn tail up into the hat on the wrong side, so on the inside of the hat, so that you can hide it really well. So I went up through some just, again, just random stitches. I'm pulling on it a little bit to make sure I'm not adding extra tension. And I'm going back down. Not pulling too tightly. Okay, and I think that was my last end. I've already done a few others and I'm going to go ahead and trim these. And you don't want to trim these like right up against the hat. Just leave it a little tiny bit since it's on the inside of the hat. No one's going to see it anyways. But it just makes sure that you don't accidentally cut a stitch and then also just gives it a little bit of wiggle room. Oh, I have did I weave this one? No. Got one more hiding over here. It's a really short one. Oh, I thought it was already woven in. Um, so I'm just gonna do this one. There. Back this way. then I can turn it back to the right side and see so you cannot see any of that and you guys we are all done that is the baby bear crocheted hat congratulations hi cheesecake what do you think <laughs> I think he likes it